MMA odds breaker. I'm Frank Trick. That is Sam Oropesa getting ready to fight. Last time we interviewed him, he had a he was getting ready to fight Andre Korzakov, but he uh, Andre got sick, so he had to postpone it. Now a little bit of an unfair advantage for Sam in, in my mind. Uh, a little bit unfair. He he gets to fight in his backyard now. He he's fighting in in uh, in Atlantic City, New Jersey, on May second on Bellator. Of course, you'll be seen on Spike TV. Uh, Sam, don't you think it's kind of an unfair advantage you being able to go to your hyperbaric chamber, stay in your own house? Um, eat your food, train at the same place all the way up until, oh, I don't know, the morning of the fight? You know, I uh, I never realized how lucky I was to do that. You know, when you fight on the regional shows, all the shows are around the corner from your house, yeah. and you never really experience what it's like until more recently when you have to stay at hotels and you got to eat their food and you got to go food shopping at their supermarkets, man. So it's definitely the ball's in my court. It's definitely an advantage. Yeah, I'd say, uh, uh, it's, uh, it is a lot nicer. To, to be at least someplace familiar. Now, there's some guys that compete in, in particular casinos, and they, they feel like they're second homes. Like, they've, they've been there so much. Like, you know, Manny Pacquiao always stays at Manly Bay, fights at MGM when he's ever he's in Vegas. He just feels like that's his second home whenever he's fighting in the States. Um, same thing with Floyd Mayweather. But Floyd Mayweather backs his fights up at the MGM, and they're always at the MGM, and he's always at his house. He lives here in Vegas, so he doesn't go far. There is a point to having a home field advantage and having your own food and, and being in their, in their cases with their own chefs, but in your case, being in your own kitchen, there is a little bit more of a relaxing standpoint. Does that go a long way to why you, your career in the very beginning of your career uh, uh, of your, you know, your 11 and two out of your 13 fights that the very beginning of your career, you were doing so well so quickly because everything was kind of right by your house. Yeah, I, I definitely would say just having that routine and not having to break that routine is such a good thing feeling man it's like uh you know i used to be superstitious and all that and i'm not anymore but it was like always that mental thing when you had that ritual you know what i mean you got to do every part of your ritual up until the fight you know like the first time i i fought far away i was like man i didn't get to do you know every little step that i would do so it's like you i was younger too so you know i got to break all those superstitions and everything now so you know getting the fight somewhere else doesn't like throw me off like it used to but it's definitely it definitely throws you off well, when you say superstitions, you know, a lot of people think automatically think baseball. These baseball players do the exact same thing in between each swing of the bat. They're always trying to, you know, do the exact same motion to get in. It's not necessarily a superstition as it is. This is what gets you ready to compete. You yeah. still have a superstition. You still warm up the same way. You're still in the locker room with the same crew. You still have your same pillow, the same bag you travel with. Like it, it, That stuff doesn't change because it's part of your routine of getting prepared. But I do understand where you're like, look, I got to have, you know, I got to have this meal before I fight. I got to have this drink yeah. before I fight. I got to talk to this person. It's not how it works. Like I, I understand that entirely. So you're, you're, you're right being able to travel around now, being able to battle in your backyard. But let's go back a couple of fights. Uh, let's go back to Chip Pollard. Uh, TKO okay. punches, first round, 37, 37 seconds. Good job on that one. Uh, Cristiano Souza, TKO punches, first round, minute, uh, three minutes and seven seconds. This is a capoeira. Very strong, very strong guy on his feet. Um, and the fight before that, uh, Brent Otari, who was uh, in uh, Matrix Fights, uh, TKO punches in the first round. Do you plan on letting this one get out of the first round just so you can go, yes, I can I can still go into the second round? Or are you trying to finish this one in the first two? Yeah, Frank, like my my philosophy is as soon as I get in there, I want to get out of there, man. Like, uh, And it's not like I'm afraid. It's like I just want to win. I want to win immediately. Like I want this guy to be on the ground, completely broken, like thanking the ref that this fight is over. And that's the philosophy I'm carrying into this fight. Do you get paid the same amount of money if the fight goes one round or the fight goes three rounds? Is it the same amount of money? Yeah, same amount. Same. You get, you get your show and your win bonus. And okay, that's so if you finish the fight in 30 seconds, you get a lot more money per second than you do <laughs> per round. So it makes sense to me, too, from a financial standpoint. It's just better finances. You know, I want to be out as quickly yeah. as I can. So, well, let's it, talk about Andre. It's, Go ahead. I get Bill Gates money. It's, it's the only time I get Bill Gates money when you can count the seconds and do the math. <laughs> right? It costs you more money to bend over to pick up the $100 than it does just to keep walking. Yeah, I, I know. <laughs> Let's talk about Andre Korzakov. He's your, he's your next opponent. Uh, he lost to Ben Askren. He got, uh, he got TKO. It was the first time that Ben Askren really showed that he could actually strike and hold somebody down and beat, not just hold him down and, and, and beat him up that way. He beats him up the, any way that he wanted to in that fight. So that was the yeah. first time he really saw how Korzakov could actually get beat up. He could really get get decidedly a decision and held down, and at the end of it, he kind of got caught up. So, do you see Korzakov changing his fight at all? Changing the way he fights at all? The way he's going to fight you? Or do you think he's going to fight you the same way he's fought everybody else? Honestly, Frank, like I watch every fight that Andre Korzakov's in, he does not change at all. And the funny thing is this: 
is I watched Alexander Shlomenko. He fought Brennan Ward like uh, right before it was the the week before I was supposed to fight uh, Korshka originally. And they showed him and Shlomenko in the locker room. And he was holding pads for Shemenko. And he even holds pads the way he fights, man. So it's like, like I I know what he wants to do. Like, I know it. If you watched any of his fights, you, you know it. You know what I mean? You watch his fights, you know what he wants to do. I really don't think he's going to change anything up. And if you, I watched his first fight to his most recent fight. And he still, he got better, obviously. Don't get me wrong. But he still makes those same mistakes that I'm willing to capitalize on when, when I watch his videos. Oh, Sam, thanks for taking a couple minutes on here with us with the MA Oddsbreaker. Uh, last question before we let you out of here. Yeah. Um, you're kind of a shoe whore, as I'm looking at your background. <laughs> I know. What, what, is no. your, what, what is your favorite shoe? Like, what, if you got to go a go-to shoe, you're like, like, I'm going out tonight, I'm going to get laid, this, I'm going to pick it up, this is why I'm going to lay it down. <laughs> or I don't know if you're dating somebody, so you might be here, like, this is the hot date night, I'm taking this girl out on a date, this is, this is what I'm going to look the best. What, what's your pair of shoes you're grabbing? Dude, I like, uh, there's this company, it's called Johnson & Mary. I don't know if you've ever heard of them. Yeah. Uh, yeah. They make really nice shoes, man. I, yeah. I spend way too much money there for shoes. And you're talking about not having Bill Gates money? Once. Those sticky shoes are expensive as hell. What's wrong with you, man? <laughs> I'm only getting one pair after a fight, so so I kind of, you know, I, I grew up, I grew up poor, Frank. Like, you know, I wasn't dirt poor, but I grew up poor. But I always had money for sneakers, man. So it just showed you where my priorities are, and they still haven't changed. Yeah, mine goes towards uh, shoes and watches. That's my that's my problem now. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, that's a, it's a big issue. All, all of us kind of have that same mentality that after every fight, you know, after every big thing, after whatever it yeah. is, like for me now, whenever I sign, sign a big stunt job or I sign a big acting job or, or I all of a sudden got a couple of extra uh, commentating jobs in between, I always want to reward myself with a new watch or a new pair of shoes. Always. You got to, man. Yeah. You have to. You have to reward yourself, man. If you don't, you end up getting stale. That's how it works. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Sam. Appreciate it, bud. Good luck, and we'll talk to you soon, man. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Frank.